Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Brennan with the Notre Dame Alumni Association. Thanks so much for joining us for another edition of Catching Up With. Our guest today is not just one of the most successful student athletes in the history of Notre Dame's track and field program. She's also one of the top long distance runners in the world today. And most importantly, a member of Notre Dame's class of 2006. Molly Huddle, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Molly, we want to talk all about your career at Notre Dame and all the success you've had afterwards. But on Catching Up With, we always like to back up and start at the beginning. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Elmira, New York, um, and a lot of Notre Dame fans there, my dad and uncle included. Um, and I remember uh, we went to, I think, two football games when I was little uh, out at Notre Dame. So we're a Notre Dame family. Uh, and were you, from a young age, were you always interested and involved in sports? Yeah, not too young of an age. Um, like, I didn't start running until I was about 12. Um, and just playing, you know, rec basketball and stuff at the same age. Um, I didn't get very serious about it until the end of high school. But my dad was doing road races and marathons when I was really young. And so I kind of always grew up with it in my mind, watching him at the races and, you know, thinking it was a cool sport and just being aware of it. Sure. So when you started running at, at 12, were you, were you successful kind of right away? It was a mixed bag, actually. I think um, people expect you to say that you were a stud right out of the gates, and that's not really true. Like, I think my dad saw that I had, you know, potential and good form, but I definitely remember um, stopping to walk in the odd road race here and there. So <laughs> I didn't win every race I ran or anything until later in my uh, high school career. So, yeah, it definitely took – actual running to get good at it. <laughs> you had a fabulously successful high school career um, by the time it ended, but I read that your, is it true that your high school didn't even have a cross country team when you, when you started there? Yeah, that's true. It's a small high school. We had about a hundred kids in my class, graduating class, um, and about 400 kids in the school. So we kind of had to add that sport at the very end, but I ended up being uh, the only person on that team my senior year. So it was kind of an odd way to run a team. Cross country is a team sport with a team score. So I kind of just um, always lost the team race, <laughs> but won the individual race. So it was an odd season, but it was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you know, how early on did you know you were going to you know, run track at the next level in college? I didn't really know until probably my senior year. Um, well, my junior year, actually, I knew because I was looking at schools. So that was also the year that I improved a lot because I started to run over the summer instead of just during the season. Um, so yeah, I'd say around junior year, I really wanted to try and get a scholarship and run at a division one school. And, you know, as we said, you had an in incredible uh, kind of last two years there in high school. I'm sure you had tons of options. What made you choose Notre Dame for college? Yeah, I definitely had, um, you know, I was looking at programs kind of with a similar student body to Notre Dame, but I always thought back to um, the football games and just the the fond stories my dad has of his time there. <laughs> um, so it was kind of something that I felt like um, had been a school I wanted to go to before running came into the picture. So it almost just made it easier when I had this extra um, kind of this extra star on my resume to help me get in. <laughs> Um, what did you study as a student at Notre Dame? I uh, got a bio degree, um, and I was hoping to go to med school after, but um, I was able to run for a long time, so that's kind of where the plans changed. <laughs> yeah. Um, how difficult, you know, that's obviously not, not an easy subject to major in. How difficult was it to balance academics with, you know, training and competing as a, as a track athlete? I found it really difficult. Um, I know some people had an easier time with just time management maybe than I did. And I felt like I was really trying to use the resources there as far as like tutors and classes where I needed the help. And, um, you know, any student athlete is going to miss some class time. And I think track and field being a three season sport is, is up there. You know, we maybe don't go on long trips, but I think that cut into a lot of study time and stuff. So yeah, it was a really challenging major, but I was really interested in it. So I didn't really want to back down and switch. <laughs> so um, I'm glad I did it. I, I wish the grades were a little better, but um, I'm glad there was help offered when the students do the student athletes needed it. It seems like you found success kind of right away when you started competing for Notre Dame. 
how surprised were you, um, you know, that so early in your career, you were one of sort of the key members on the team at Notre Dame and one of the better runners uh, kind of in the Big East? I, yeah, I didn't know what to expect my freshman year coming in. I, I had no idea. I didn't know if I would even be traveling or if I'd be running with one of the top girls on the team. Um, and about halfway through the season, um, myself and Lauren King kind of got into this groove together and we were kind of a really solid one, two for the cross country team. And that's just how things went for the next three years, really with the two of us. So I was glad to have her there. And, um, I think we like fueled each other pretty well. Um, and it was, it, you know, the probably the time management side was harder to adapt to for me than the actual um, workout adaptation side. You know, I think I adapted to the workload pretty well in my freshman year as far as like increased mileage and harder workouts. Um, that seemed uh, to go as good as I could have asked for it to that first year. You obviously have to put a lot of training in when you're running cross country and, and indoor and outdoor track. Um, did you have a favorite route on campus or in South Bend that, that you like to run? Yeah, it's no longer uh, open for business, but we would go to St. Mary's and the trails there. Um, we did that almost every day. It was about a seven mile run by the time you got over there and did maybe three miles of trails and came home. Um, I, I miss that we can't go in there anymore because um, it was kind of a nice little route. But that was, I'd say a lot of the track athletes will echo that. <laughs> Um, as we said earlier, you know, you had one of the most successful careers in, in Notre Dame history. You, you know, were the Big East Outstanding Track Performer twice and, you know, two different years and you were named an All-American 10 times, which I believe is still a Notre Dame record. When you look back on your college career, what are you most proud of? Um, I'm definitely proud of the cross-country team finishes. We were fourth and third, I think, were our two highest when I was there. Um, so those were just the most fun and kind of the third place finish was the most surprising for us. So that's definitely up there. Um, that and, um, probably the 5k, the American junior record that I got my freshman year, um, just cause it was unexpected and it kind of like paved the way, uh, for me in that, as far as like sticking to that event and really finding my best event so early on in, in my college career because I was probably going to run the mile for a few years before switching to the 5k. So that was kind of an important moment for me too. You said earlier, you know, you were studying biology, thinking of going to medical school as you progressed in your career as a student athlete at Notre Dame. At what point did you start to think, you know, maybe I should put med school on hold and do this full time when I finish up uh, college? Uh, well, I didn't really know what would be required performance wise to be good enough to to run professionally, um, the idea and desire to do it probably was, um, you know, the end of my freshman year, beginning of my sophomore year when I had run a few fast times on the track and I thought, okay, I could hack it. You know, if I get a little bit better, um, I could run professionally. It's just, then the next step is, are you good enough to get the sponsorship and the support? So my senior year, I still wasn't sure if, um, that was doable or not. So I kind of, um, like I took the MCATs and stuff. Um, and fortunately, Saucony was supportive of me from, you know, the start of my post-college career and I'm still run for them today. And um, it's been, it's been really great. I'm re I felt really lucky to, that they believed in me and it's taken off. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, they know how athletes go become professionals in sports like basketball and football that have high profile drafts. What are kind of the initial steps you take? You talked about getting a sponsorship. How did you go about, you know, becoming a professional? You know, where did you go? Where do you train? How, how did you set all set that all up? Yeah, it's definitely not at all like the NBA or NFL <laughs> situation. I mean, most people, if I'm sitting next to someone at the airport and strike up a conversation, they don't know that you can even run for a living. Um, so it's, it's definitely, you know, not the most well-known pathway, but ideally you get an agent right out of, college and um, a major shoe company has been um, historically the the like major sponsors of the athletes usually one shoe company um, we don't have like a, a league or a federation that puts a lot of money into the sport so it's it's based on sponsorships and um, there's a few group oriented like there's a few training groups uh, geared towards professional running around the country but some people like stick with their college coach some people 
train alone. Um, it's very flexible and kind of, um, you know, by the design of the athlete most of the time. So like, for example, my coach is a college coach uh, at Providence College. Um, and another really uh, good coach uh, coaches out at Colorado. And, you know, they're associated with the university and that allows them to coach professionals almost as a side uh, job, even though um, my coach is a very accomplished professional coach. It's just, you know, the college system is what allows him to do that. So it, there's a lot of different pathways. And um, my coach at Notre Dame was Tim Connolly, and he kind of helped me plan my my next step in my living situation and my coaching situation when I left. Um, what is your training regimen, you know, day to day, kind of through the year as you prepare for all the kind of big tough races you're running in? What, what do your days look like as you're, as you're getting ready? Yeah, it's, they're, they sound one dimensional, but that's kind of required. You need to just lay down, you know, two or three months a year of just boring um, hard work where you don't do much else in the day. So like, that's the phase I'm in right now. That's like my um, winter is usually just, I go somewhere nice to train. Uh, we're in Arizona right now. And um, usually I'll do like, I don't know, 12 to 15 miles a day broken up into two runs most days. And we do about two workouts a week, which would be like going to the track and doing reps or doing like a long, hard effort on the road. Um, and then there's usually a long run thrown in there as well. And, you know, we're, we kind of fit in some supplementary work with like weightlifting. Um, it's not a huge focus. But at the end of the day, you really only have like two or three hours of free time where you're not working out <laughs> or seeing a physical therapist or something. So um, this time of year, you're kind of just feels like Groundhog Day. <laughs> Every day you just get up and do the same thing. Are you normally running by yourself or do you have someone you're training with? Yeah, we have a little group down here. It's myself and um, recent Providence College graduate, Emily Sisson. We have we run similar events, um, and we have the same coach. And then a girl who's training for the Marathon Olympic Trials, which is in two weeks, actually. Um, and she, Katie DiCamillo, she's coached by my coach as well. So usually, and my husband, Kurt, has been helping us as well. Um, he's class of 07. Um, and we usually have a group of, like, three, four girls at any given time. Um, you know, in 2012, you had the, you know, the opportunity to represent the United States in London for the Olympic Games. How special of an experience was that for you to, to represent your country sort of at the highest level internationally? Yeah, it was amazing. It was definitely a dream come true. And, um, it's kind of, I always say the, in the professional running world, that's the pinnacle of the sport is the Olympics. That's what we all train for. And our lives are in four year cycles um, of planning because of the Olympics. So I was so grateful and just really relieved to be able to say that I'm an Olympian and represent the US. And, um, you know, I, I felt like just getting there was the hard part. And um, performing well there was like a whole nother level of preparedness. <laughs> so I'm hoping this time around, I, I've been there once and I can get there again and then focus on performing really well as well. So, uh, Yeah, you mentioned the Olympics are coming up uh, in, in Brazil this summer. What, uh, what events are you or event are you targeting? What are you training towards? Which distances uh, for the Olympic trials and everything? I'm focusing on the 10K and 5K again next year. Um, Ideally, I'll run just the 10K at the Olympics, um, but at the trials, I just, as a, um, you know, security situation, I'll probably enter the 5 and the 10, um, and yeah, hopefully I make the team and uh, everything goes smoothly, and uh, give it another go. <laughs> so is that sort of your major focus this year, getting ready for the Olympic trials and eventually the Olympics? Yeah, I'd say most athletes are working back from that day, um, the Olympic trials or the Olympics, and uh, every other race is just kind of fitting in around that. So it's a high stakes year for sure. <laughs> it seems like you had maybe your most successful year last year um, as a runner, but you also had an incident that got a lot of attention on the internet. Uh, I believe at the 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 internet, the World Championships in Be Beijing in the ten thousand meters. You were ready, poised to finish third and kind of slowed down a little bit at the very end and someone passed you. Um, what was that? How tough was it to swallow that and all the attention that it got afterwards? It, it was really hard. I mean, to be honest, it's still hard. It just doesn't feel that long ago. But um, I've tried to move on from it. It's I've raced quite a bit since then. And 
um, you like to get attention for, you know, you dream of one day, you know, being on the Today Show or something for, for doing something good, winning a medal. And so to get so much attention for the negative side of the sport, those things happen, is has been really hard to get over. So I don't know. I, I People say, ask me what I learned from it. And I'm just kind of like still trying to make sense of it and, and really just trying to look forward and um, look ahead because that kind of seemed like the most productive thing, most productive way to go about it. Um, did it did it motivate you at all? Because it seemed like, you know, even after that, I think you won six U.S. titles last year and five of them came after that race. You were the first American to win the, uh, the New York City Half Marathon. Was that a kind of a big source of, of motivation that led to what a successful fall you had? It was a little bit motivating. I mean, it was a little bit um, demoralizing at the same time. I think I just was angry and the racing was a good way to get through it. Um, so I kind of just tried to use the races afterwards to, I don't like the best I could do to rewrite my story really. Um, so that's, I'm hoping that carries over into this year and, and it is more fuel than a distraction. Um, as I said, you know, you were the, the first American to win the New York City Half Marathon. You hold two American records, I believe. It seems like when researching your career, I'm finding a lot of first ever and, and record holder. Is it difficult to keep kind of, um, you know, setting new goals when you're accomplishing things that a lot of, you know, first runners at Notre Dame, then American runners have, have never accomplished before? Yeah, at the start of the year, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have those goals. They're kind of more um, diffuse than that of just like, be healthy, get as fit as you can and, and just try and race harder than you have the last time. And, and I hope that those things keep coming out of it, those firsts and those records. And um, I've never been someone to kind of like, point to a record and call it out ahead of time that doesn't usually work well for me so I just I feel like every year I just I hope to be better that, at something than the last year and, and so far I have found something to walk away with happy at the end of the year and um, I hope I have a few more years of that at least. <laughs> yeah you, you, you said a few more years how much longer do you think you can compete at, the, at this high of a level what are your sort of um, expectations for the longevity of your career as a, one of the top runners in the world? I mean, it's different for everyone. I, I think, I, you know, most people, especially if they go to the marathon, can run well into their mid-30s. So it's, that's definitely a race I'd like to tackle um, in the next, you know, this year or next year. So I think at least, you know, two or three, four more years, uh, you know, at the longer distances would be great. <laughs> you said you'd like to tackle a marathon. Do you have any specific plans of when – which marathon you'd like to kind of be your, your first competitive one or, or, or when that would be? Um, I'd love to try one this fall. I don't have any concrete plans yet. Um, so we're just going to kind of wait till the Olympics are over and assess from there. <laughs> is it, um, obviously you're so used to training. Is it daunting to go up to an even, you know, higher distance, the 26.2? Is that, uh, is that intimidating to start taking that on? It really is. Um, fortunately I have, some training partners who are really experienced actually almost all my training partners have run a marathon um so i'm hoping to learn from their lessons <laughs> uh, my coach has run a marathon uh his brother is a very good marathoner so yeah i'm hoping to learn from other people's trials for sure <laughs> and so after your your kind of running days are over um what do you think you'd like to do then are you still thinking of maybe going back to medical school or or you would obviously have a great resume for coaching. What, what's sort of your long-term plans uh, after your competitive running days are, are done? Yeah, I mean, the plan was definitely, I still have an interest in, um, in medicine and medical school was an option, but I don't know how long I'll be running and that kind of makes it difficult. You know, I obviously want to stretch it out as long as I can because I do love it and uh, I love competing. Um, and I think, you know, even when I'm a little past my peak, there'll be a lot of things I can still do competitively. So I think I'm just going to see where I end up. Um, and uh, yeah, just see, see if the medical school door is still open as a 40 year old. <laughs> but ideally, that that would be life number two. <laughs> Great. Well, do you have any upcoming races that if our uh, Notre Dame alumni and friends want to want to follow you as you, you progress through this year that they should be uh, paying attention to what's kind of on the docket? 
Uh, the next thing coming up is an indoor 5K at the Milrose Games at the Armory in New York City on February uh, 18th, I believe. And or sorry, 18th, yeah. And New York City half again in mid March. So. Well, uh, well, good luck with those. Good luck with the uh, the Olympic trials and and hopefully the the Olympics. And, and thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks to all of you who uh, watched this edition of Catching Up With. Remember, for all episodes of Catching Up With and all of our other online learning content, you can either go to YouTube and, and search for the Notre Dame Alumni Association and find our channel there, or you can visit us at my.nd.edu slash learn. I'm Kevin Brennan with the Notre Dame Alumni Association. Thanks so much for watching, and go Irish.